I'm gonna I'm gonna take on the name Smoothie G now. Yeah. I love it. I love uh, it. I'm gonna be Smoothie G. I mean, <laughs> at least with men. I mean. Hey, Warners, welcome to Women Your Mother Warns You About. The podcast that makes sales sexy again. I'm Rachel Pitts, formerly Rachel Tipton, but I'm married, so we got to change the name. I'm a mom, realtor, and creator of The Closing Curve. <laughs> and I'm Gina Tremarco, still Gina Tremarco, <laughs> still married to the same guy. Founder and sales <laughs> trainer at Pivot 10 Results in Carolina Improv. And you know what? I mean, I'm chuckling about that. Still married to the same guy. Uh, this episode coming up, this interview with Jared, Jared Glant is, I mean, I took like, I took some stuff away just about my own marriage, honestly. Yeah. Like, we didn't think that we, so I was so jacked up about talking to Jared Glant because I'm such a huge Grant Cardone fan and, and he is basically Grant's right hand man. And we thought it was going to be all sales, but it turned into basically relationship advice, which was fantastic. Yeah, it was it was it was great relationship advice. Um, I think it was so cool to like just hear the way he tries to work through balancing marriage and being a dad and running this multi million dollar company. And you know, it sounds like he's definitely done some work and looks inside of himself to work on those things. So that was a big aha for me. But I really also enjoyed the advice he gave and the talk he gave us about um, women in sales and using our softer side and not seeing the weakness of being a woman that some sometimes we can do. So I thought he gave some really great advice and yet another man saying that women are better at sales. Yeah, and he also was hot to look at. I mean, I can say that he is <laughs> he, married. He That's why hot. I went and I went there because women go and go follow him on social because he's super cute and hot, and he's also you know he's very accomplished for a young man. He is the vice president of business development and sales at Grant Cardone Enterprises, the world's premier and premier sales and management training company. He also co-hosts the weekly webcast series focused on millennial business and success called Young Hustlers. He graduated from California State University, San Marcos, with a degree in business administration and spent time in the auto, real estate, and travel media services industry and also worked in sales and marketing within the asset management, analysis, and finance fields. His remarkable working relationship with Mr. Cardone started in 2010. And guided by that mentorship, he is now a multimillionaire and in the top 1% income bracket of his peer group. He is a rock star extraordinaire. Yeah, you guys are going to really love this interview. Um, if you go to his LinkedIn profile, and you could just you could find Jared Glant anywhere. He There's a great uh, bio about him. Actually, I think that's where the bio was that I read to him. Well, you're... <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to just you're going to love this episode of of how he got to where he is at such a young age. Um, so let's let's do the show. But before we roll it with the show, you want to talk about ratings and reviews? Yes. Warners, if you haven't given us a review yet, please go to our show on iTunes. Five stars is our favorite and <laughs> leave something fun that we can read on upcoming episodes because we just are so flattered and we just love reviews and we will give you a shout out if you leave one for us. You can access our iTunes page from our website, womenyourmotherwarnsyouabout.com. So let's get on with this episode featuring Jared Glant. Jared, welcome to Women Your Mother Warned You About. It's great to be here. Rachel and I are so excited to have you. Um, Rachel, I mean, I'm excited, but Rachel is like jumping up and down excited a little more so than me. I, I'm not sure why, but she's like so in love with you guys. I am too. But I, she's just, she's like, I can't, like, we've literally been sitting here like, we're going to wait. We're going to wait. We'll, we'll do whatever we can to be <laughs> well, on with here. Her. We're and I'm here. excited to be here. And I can't wait to experience firsthand <laughs> Why your show is titled "Women You Your Mother Warned You About." Okay, did you? Um, no pressure. Did you have a chance to listen to any any of the episodes? 
I didn't. I apologize. I've been saying that's OK. No, it's all yeah. good. It's all good. We just want to know what you know I about us Listen to my own podcast. <laughs> we don't you know what? <laughs> Me neither. We don't listen to ours either. So we yeah. yeah. So so it's all good. Uh, Rach, you want to talk a little bit about the show so Jared knows what he's getting him getting himself into? We are the podcast that keeps sales sexy or actually we make it sexy again. And we just love to talk about raw subjects, real subjects, the challenges that people have as women in business and basically just in business as well, which obviously we don't mind having men on because we are not feminists. We love men and um, we just want to be able to provide value to people, but not stuffy kind of value, like real raw feet on the ground, roll up your sleeves kind of stuff they can use right now. Mm -hmm. And be be relatable because shit happens every day when you're trying to make shit happen and it's just let's be real about it and then how do we pivot and make things happen and move forward um so that's what it's about we're, we like to just stand in who we are and that's our value and we're going to be who we are you'll either like us or you don't like us we have a feeling you might like us yeah i i have a feeling i will as well <laughs> well one of the um the thing that really stuck out for me was a, a bio that you wrote for yourself I wrote it for myself. I think I think that's what I read, and I could be wrong. If you don't mind, I'm gonna I'm just gonna read a little okay. bit of it. Is that okay with you? Somebody wrote it and said that he wrote it. Himself. Yeah, that was. <laughs> I think that was it. Oh, oh, it was. I don't know if it was somewhere on 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 uh, Grant Cardone's website, but it said. I think it was because it says bio as told by Jared. Okay. All right. Okay. That's it. So, um, so in case you didn't write it, it'll be good to hear it. So yeah. in my third year of college in San Diego, I got a job selling print and online advertising and at 21 at 21 and quickly became the number two rep in the country, making 150,000 a year. So naturally I dropped out of college, ended up taking seven years to finish and no, I'm not a lawyer to focus on making money. Well, corporate greed took, took, before too long and my territory was cut into thirds so I decided to leave the company. I guess I left out that during this time making money at at a young age I partied three to four days a week and blew every dollar that I made. This was actually a really dark time for me. I was hanging out with people I shouldn't have been and doing things I shouldn't have been doing. Lesson learned. I ran away from my problems and situation. Went to Austin to work for my dad and there and was there for three years. I was miserable and was looking for a way out. When I came across a video of Grant Cardone, I got woke up and was convinced that this was the person I needed to work for, the only person that I needed to work for. So I moved back to San Diego to position myself to work for the guy who during a dark time reminded me what I was capable of. I feel like I've told that story before, but I never wrote that down anywhere. Yes, I love it. See, now that is the beauty of, there's so many things I love about Grant Cardone and just, I I love listening to his audiobooks because I love his voice, but just like be real, like, oh, I'm not sure I wrote that. But that's okay because it's still awesome. Because somebody was probably like, they're like, hey, uh, you know, you need to write a bio for yourself. And I'm like, I hate writing bios. I do too. I hate it. Go listen to a a presentation from somewhere or something. (laughs) Tell us the story about, because I think it's really a great story about persistence. And I don't even know the story, but just what I know of the story of how you approached Grant and how you became a part of his organization? Uh, I just started calling the office. So like once I got connected to who he was, then I just started calling the office every day and like figured out who everybody was. And, you know, next thing you know, like a month and a half in, they, they invite me up for an interview. So it's like, like with anything in, in sales, you know, like the, the stuff you really want's never going to be the easy stuff. The, the, the dream clients, never the easy one. Um, you know, the people that are the hardest to get to are the easiest ones to close. So for me, it was just like, you know, um, I had never followed up to that degree before because I, I, I just, uh, maybe pain or fear or whatever was pushing me away from where I wanted to go harder than I had ever been pushed before because I was just like, felt like I had wasted like six years of my life. And so I was like, I needed to do something and I felt like this was the vehicle. And then I just kind of poured all into it and, and continued that after I got the job and continued it. Once I saw how big the opportunity really was, which I was bigger than I thought it was. And so that kind of ignited me again. And in the first, you know, three or four years that I worked for Grant, it was like, you know, 
I mean, we're still seven days a week, but like I was in the office, like I was, we were in LA and I would wake up at, you know, 4.30 in the morning, go to the gym, work out, get to the office by 6 a.m. so that I could start calling businesses on the East Coast that were opening at nine. And then I'd be at the office until, you know, seven or eight o'clock at night. And then I'd go home, uh, go to sleep. I, you know, this was when I was smoking weed up all, every day. So I'd, you know, go home, smoke weed, go to bed. And I would just like on repeat. And then Saturdays I would do that. I'd go in, I'd do the same thing. I'd show up at 6 a.m. and I'd stay till about noon. Um, but, uh, it was, a, uh, it was a period for me where I like really had to lean in on something. And so I think I was able to collapse a lot of time, uh, because of the amount of energy and effort that I put into it. And I think that for a lot of people, they just never get to that payoff or they get there and it just takes them a lot longer because there were so many sacrifices in the beginning and, you know, new product, uh, small company that was, you know, like growing stage and, you know, just trying to figure a lot of things out for myself personally. And, you know, so there was just a lot of change happening, but it was like, I was able to just go all the way into this one opportunity and get really laser focused on it. And it just seems like in life, whenever you find something that you get really focused on, if it's a, a, a job or a guy or a girl or, you know, whatever, a deal, like you just, whatever you really like zone in on and you commit to it. Like I've, approached it with a, a, a non-option uh, approach. It was like, this isn't an option. This is just going to happen. And it's just depending on how long it's going to take is going to be, de depend how long it's going to take is going to be dependent on how hard I push to get it. So um, it was a really good experience, just the whole onboarding point. And then the, and so now the company's in a very different position. You know, now we've, you know, we had three employees before and now we have 130 and you know, we had, I was doing, I still do a lot of different jobs, but uh, I was doing, you know, reception, sales, customer support, uh, client performance, uh, going to, you know, uh, business development, it, seminars and workshops, you know, like, so I was doing like everything. And then as the company started growing, then I got to kind of create these new little uh, places for me to fit in. And then, you know, where we're at today, we just have the ability where I've got so much knowledge about the company and, and our products and our customer and, and, um, grant, you know, and to where, to where I'm able to really take a look from 30,000 feet and figure out where some really big plays are, uh, for us in business. And so that's really exciting because it's still a game, but the scores are way bigger now. So where are some of those opportunities that you've discovered? Well, like we just, we, we're, we're launching a software division right now inside our company. Uh, we, we did uh, a, an event last year called the 10X Growth Conference. I don't know if you have heard about it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, we sold uh, over 34,400 tickets to that event. So that was uh, of its kind, not done by a third-party promoter. It was the biggest event of its kind. Now, that's so, what we we've heard. Was it, wasn't it over Super Bowl weekend? Yeah. Yep. We just talked to a girl yesterday, and she was at that event, and she was referencing how amazing it was that there were that many people over Super Bowl weekend. It was I just mean, you know off the hook. People people uh, are more interested in money than football. <laughs> you know, Amen. So at the end of the day, foot, the football game doesn't pay your rent or your bills. So, um, you know, but like we have a software division, the event company is growing, we're building layers out to the event company. Uh, we have a license program that we just launched that'll have a coaching component to it. So that'll be, you know, a nine figure business for us over the next five or 10 years. Uh, we've got a, uh, a new business unit called Cardone Ventures that we're launching, which basically is um, is sort of like version 2.0 of what we do with companies now. So we we train companies, we train their teams, we try to build an, a comprehensive solution where they get more than just sales training, they can get leadership training and there's hiring training and personality assessments. So it's, it's more of a people solution than just a sales solution. Mm -hmm. um, but we just get to a point where we work with companies, they use the product and they, they have big wins, but their business like even if you have great salespeople, you still may have a knucklehead running the business. <laughs> and, 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 and I say that I say that kind yeah. of like as a joke, but but, but the it, truth but is, is that you know when somebody starts out with three salespeople, they know what gets them from 
a uh, hundred grand in sales to a million, but getting from a million to 10 million, there's a lot of things that they don't understand about their business. So Cardone Ventures is basically uh, a, a, a unit that develops uh, a business in, in three different ways. We provide strategy and consultation seminars and workshops that are very high level executive about basically scaling people, processes, systems in your business. Uh, and then we actually provide like a shared services model and then ultimately an equity model where we take positions in companies. So, um, you know, there's just a lot of really fun stuff, you know, and then we get to, we got a global tour this year. We're doing Singapore and Malaysia next month, Singapore, Romania and Malaysia next month. So the, like the, the, the international, uh, the, like the international events are, are going to be really interesting and fun to build out and develop. And, you know, Australia, we've got a whole tour around Australia this year, all over Europe. So it's pretty exciting. Wow. Super fun. So I have to just ask, this is the kind of stuff you've been warned about. So I know <laughs> that I, <laughs> I can see that you have a wedding ring on. So how long have you been married and how do I know Grant is very family focused, even though he's super, super busy mm -hmm. with his schedule. And how do you how do you circle your busy schedule around your family? I know that's personal, but yeah, no, you know, so there's a lot like of working morning, people that you make time like with anything else. You can make excuses or you can make time. So um, for me, it's like I, I wake up, I go to the gym in the morning early enough to where when I get back, my baby Jake is just kind of getting up. And so I get, you know, maybe 30 minutes with him uh, in the morning and before I have to go to work and then I'm close enough, like I, you know, paid the, paid the money to live close enough to the office where I can go home for lunch. So I wait normally till he wakes up from his nap and then I jam home and we go hang out. I eat, you know, get another like 30 minutes with him. And then uh, end of the day, you know, I usually, my wife has a business and so she'll kind of transition from mom mode into business mode and then you know, I'll take over his dad for the, the end of the night and put him down and do all that fun stuff. So, you know, you just work it out. You work it out, you know? And, and so I just, you know, I never want to look back and be like, you know, I, I, I wish I would have spent more time with, with your, with my kid when he was growing up and, and have all these regrets. Cause he's so amazing. Like he's the smartest, cutest, like most amazing little thing I've ever seen. It just, <laughs> That's it, so it, great. Thank you for sharing that because I think there's a lot of our listeners out there that are moms and, and possibly dads. And I think it's important to point out that you can work very focused and work very hard in a lot of hours, but also make your family a priority. Yeah. And, and, and part of it too is like, you know, and then, so that's like the, that's like the kid piece of it. And then you have the wife piece of it and you got to try to figure all that out. And she's trying to build a business right now. And so it's super stressful and a lot of work and no money in the beginning, like with everything. So she's going through all that. And then, you know, uh, we're both running full speed. So it's like, how do we, how do we, you know, merge the road? And, you know, so we make time for each other. Like we'll like on Thursday nights, we do like wine and sushi. And then we'll, we have these like little conversation cards that we go out on the balcony and just drink a glass of wine and have these little car, you know, these little conversations based on these cards that they're questions that you, you know, you don't ask, you know, um, those are cool those people that have to be forced into like small talk. <laughs> that, I, I can't stand it. Um, I like to have a conversation that has a purpose and, and, and so women communicate very differently than men. Like my wife likes to talk about nothing a lot. Like just, just, just to like, is a, is a, you know, Hey, well, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And it's just, I can't get into the conversation. And so it takes something and we both I, I, I understand this. So it's like, instead of her banging on me for about, about something that she knows I'm not good at, we just create a, an environment where that thing that I'm not good at is, 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 is kind of like bolstered up. So it's, it's like, you know, instead of me having to come up with all this, like, what are we going to talk about? Uh, we have these little interesting questions that we that's all, that's that, that is so awesome. Um, you know, and our show is very much about the blend of life and business, especially for women. How do you make both work? And I think when you can identify those are the challenges that you're having just as human beings. Right. And you can identify that and then you can work on that. You can keep everything on track while still keeping business on track. 
Well, and, and so like the 10X concept is not about just money and business. It's right. about, and so, and so for me, I, like my wife has to bring me back in sometimes like, Hey, we need some time. We need to connect. We need to like, let's do date night. Let's do this. And so we do it. And so, you know, cause I get super focused on the thing that I'm doing and you know, like I do my best to bring my head up, but he also has to do it in a way that's non-confrontational and, and it's coming from a, a position of love and wanting to connect rather than a potential position of like, I'm attacking you cause you're an asshole and you, you know, like I get stuff going on, like all this stuff that we're doing, like I get in my head, like I have full conversations with my, in my head with myself, like, man, how's this going to work? Blah, 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 blah. And then she's like, Jared. And I'm like, she's like, I've been asking you a question. I'm like, like, I got to like snap out of it. Right. So, but, but it's just an understanding. Like we're both committed to where we're going. She knows I love her. She knows I, I do things and make time to like make her feel special and, and all that stuff. So it's not easy. It, it's, 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 uh, it's another dimension to success that, that just, just like getting the job in the beginning, it just takes time and it takes energy and persistence and creativity. Like everything that you want requires all of those things, whether it's a great job, a great relationship with your wife or your husband, uh, you know, a relationship with your kids, uh, relationship with your friends and family, uh, health, like they all take the same thing. Um, people just, in my mind, I think they, they, they think that it changes based on kind of the division of your life that you're going into. And they're like, well, this is my marriage. It doesn't require the same thing. Like you, you're telling me that you called that customer for a year and a half before you did a deal with them, but you're not willing to make time. Even if you have to put something on your calendar, Hey, text your wife, something nice right now. Like, even if you, like you put, you put people you don't even know on your calendar because that's the only way you remember things talking about myself, but you won't even put a reminder on your calendar to be like, Hey babe, I just want to let you know. I appreciate everything that you're doing. Love you so much. Can't wait to see you. Like, you know, so it's, it's like, you have to put effort and energy into all these different areas. And I got to wake up uh, at five o'clock in the morning or five thirty in the morning to be down there at the gym. And I've got to work out with a trainer. Otherwise I have a shitty workout because I go easy on myself. So like it, it just, everything requires work and energy. And the sooner people can get past the, the idea that it's all going to be easy and they only have to work hard on the work thing. And then everything else kind of works itself out. Like the sooner you get past that, the sooner it makes it possible for you to get all of it. Well, I, you know, we have so many listeners that are, are women. Most of them are women, women in sales, women in business. And um, this went a completely different direction than I expected, but in a good way. I think our listeners are gonna are gonna end up playing this back for their husbands. Yeah, and hey, look, let me just tell you, like, from both sides of it, like, ladies, you got to do a good job of communicating without the emotion sometimes. Because that's like, I try to like, whenever my wife has a, a, a super highly emotional re, like reaction to me, then it's like, hey, let's just calm down. Like, I, I realize you're probably upset and frustrated about something right now. The best way for us to work through it is to like, just take a breath for a second and then let's figure out how we can move through it. And logic, emotion, I know sometimes those things are not like on the same page, but um, You've got to do a good job, whether you're a female and you're the head of the household or the breadwinner, or you're a male, like you got to know, like the person that is driving the economics of the household is going to be really focused on that thing. And so you just have to find those non-attacking, non-threatening ways to have those conversations. And, you know, coming at me aggressively is not the best way to start a conversation with me, just like a conversation with an employee or a prospect or a customer, like, dude, at the end of the day, would you talk to your, uh, a, a prospect the same way you talk to your wife or your husband? Fuck no. Like, no way. Because you wouldn't get the deal. And so if the idea is to get the deal, then you need to, like, again, like, there is no difference in these different areas, these different veins that you run yeah. in in life, and people think that there are. 
So would what kind of advice would you have for women in sales? And what we'd also like to know your perspective on the difference between men and women when they hustle in sales. But because we are emotional, a lot of, you know, a lot of us believe women are really can sometimes be better at the sale because because of our emotions. But we also we do you do you? Yeah, I I definitely I I think that that um, I think a lot of women get in their own head about, you know, um, about their their perceived weakness in a deal when they really have strength if it's represented the right way. And if they truly understand what their strength is in a deal, if I could, if I could get a room full of female salespeople back there, I know we would do more business. I know for sure. Um, but it's just, you can't find a bunch of women that want to go grind out cold calls all day, you know, and they want to move to Miami. And so there's, you know, we have some different complexities because of our situation and, you know, if you've got a kid and, and you're married and you're in Kansas and you're making a hundred grand a year and you move to Miami, the, the money doesn't transfer over and then kids come out of school. So just recruiting is an interesting thing in Miami for us. And we attract a lot of males, but um, women, I think definitely have a leg up. I think that they can, they can get in through ways and use things that, that men don't have. Like men don't have emotion. Men don't have that soft kind of like, like, man, I, 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 we, we had a a gal that, that used to work for us and she was just, she just had this way of like making everything, like all the tension that normally would be in a very aggressive call. Like she was cold calling car dealers and she would say three sentences and it would just be like all of the tension and not in like a, oh, I'm going to be nice because this is a girl. Like I'm talking to a woman, so I'm going to be nice. But she had a way to like diffuse all of the tension out of the situation in the call that uh, uh, a male ego-driven, high D uh, 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 personality, like you end up like bowing into each, you end up bowing into each other. So it's just very different and both work. But I what think d- one, one works better. Do you re- do you remember what it was that she did to diffuse? Because that would be such a great strategy. Oh, I, and I have a, a sales guy. His name's Dave Robards, and Dave, and this is the perfect example of it. Because I don't know what to call it with with a with a with a woman, <laughs> but Dave, uh, w- you know, he was a ladies' man. Like he was like you know when he would be, he's big and tall, and you know he's six four or something, and very big presence, and you know like. He's the kind of guy that is when he walks into a room and there's new people in there, like they get a little bit like, dude, is, what's up with this guy? Like, is he, a, is he a, like a dick? Like he seems kind <laughs> of like, like I, I, I don't get him yet. And so he has this very like stern front. But when he would, he would, I would hear him on calls when he was like, he worked like right next to me in close proximity for like a couple of years. And I would hear him on a call and he would change. And I'm like, Dave, what happened on that call? Well, you know, uh, I don't know, man. You know, I, I did my same thing, blah, 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 you know. And, and, and she was really, and as soon as she, he said that, he was, I realized he was dropping into the call differently because he was talking to a woman. And from his, like, you know, woman thing that he was doing, he dropped into this thing that we called Smoothie D. And so, so he went from Dave to Smoothie D because he was talking to, and, and women love him, like, because he drops into this like Smoothie D and he becomes a completely different person. And I'm like, dude, you need to Smoothie D everybody. Like Smoothie D everybody because your, 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 your cadence and your, your fluidity in the call changes so much. And instead of this big, bad, I'm going to roll you over in this call, you're like this really smooth, cool kind of flow in with the deal kind of thing. And, and it works. And so we would be like, dude, you got to channel your smoothie D. And I think the same thing, women naturally bring that to the call. And in a way where male and male, ba 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 you have like a, a female who comes in and can, can like 
it just like direct the flow. It's like if you had two people pushing their hands together like this, right? Like, like facing each other and they're pushing, pushing their hands together. There's going to be resistance and nobody's going to move. Right. But if the person on the other end starts falling back, you could actually control, they'd be pushing you backwards, but you could control where they went if they were pushing. And so I think for, I hope that picture resonates because if you can understand that in a sales transaction where you have somebody that's doing a lot of pushing, but you're the one that's controlling it by deflecting or directing the, the push, then you control the sale. And so I think women naturally have that. I think men don't. I think men have the opposite. I think men have the, I'm going to, you know, run into you head to head and we're going to, we're going to battle like barbarians or whatever. You know? uh, <laughs> that's and, and such a great I, point. I don't think it's as effective. So the, very long winded answer, but that's my, my two cents. And I think there's women out there. There's, there's so many women out there that aren't confident and that's probably the best thing they could hear is, use your femininity to your advantage. Don't think that it's a weakness like you started your whole commentary yeah. with. And it's not a sexual thing at all. It's no. just understanding the the flow and how, you know, knowing how to come back through a no or a we're not interested or we got to wait or we got to do this or we got to do that. And it's like being able to confidently keep coming back without escalating the tension yeah. of that situation. Women are very good at that. You know, what really what really kind of comes to mind as you talk about this, Jared, and I, I never really thought about this like this, um, kind of like the dating metaphor of what what do we do as women to like play the game of getting you to like us and come over our way? And it's kind of a lot. I'm going to I'm going to take on the name Smoothie G now. Yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I'm going to be Smoothie G. I mean, <laughs> At least with men. I mean, I yeah, love it. So, like, I don't think that it, it needs to be this, like, well, I don't want to be objectified and I don't want to. It's not about that. Right, it's right. About using, it's about using uh, your existence on this planet, like male, female. You're different. You have things that you can do in ways that you communicate and hold yourself yeah. and carry yourself that are different than the male. Like it's, they're different. Use it. Like it, you don't, and don't, you don't have to be overly aggressive with it. You need to be, you need to push professionally and you need to know how to like be smooth when you're doing the rounds, trying to move somebody off of a no. Oh my gosh. We could talk to you forever, but we know that um, all of our schedules are a little limited today. Maybe we can have you on another time because you could do a whole marriage counseling episode, I think. <laughs> Well, I'm still working on it too. I don't get it right every time. I sent my wife flowers today. Yeah. Good job. Good. Good. Job. We um we only got a couple of minutes left, Rachel. I want to do. Were there any other questions that you want to ask Jared while we while we have him? Just want to ask what advice you'd give to. I mean, you're pre quite a young guy who's done really well for himself, and I know you know. Is there any advice that you would have for for people in your age bracket, your peers, that they should be doing right now today? to reach a level of success that they desire. Yeah, so um, I think it's, I think big companies are great to work for because you get to, like you have to have a plan. Like you, you can't let life happen to you. You have to be, you have to have intention with what you're doing. And unfortunately it took me till I was 26 to really get in a position where I could figure this out. But Big companies are a great place to go and learn systems and processes. And there, there's a lot of good things that com big companies do uh, that are efficient and, and can be highly valuable to learn. And so I did that piece and I made decent money, but there's no way at 35 years old, I can't say no way because maybe there's some situations out there, but but at 35 years old, making the money that I make, if I would have been, if I would have just stayed on the corporate route, like that train is a long, like I make more money than CEOs of big companies do. And, and the reason is because I got a small company that I went to work for that had a product that I believed in, that had a leader that I knew was willing 
to swing for the fences and he had a lot of horsepower and I believed in him and, and I believed in the material, believed in the product, believed in him at this time. He was, he was really well off because of the real estate. He had a big house and fancy house in the Hollywood Hills that Leonardo DiCaprio was his next door neighbor. But, um, so I saw that and I'm like, this guy knows what he's doing. And he's, and he, he's more of a grinder than I thought he was honestly, like, like the, the push, uh, of, of, of his purpose and his goals is much bigger than I thought it was actually. Um, but you have to find a small company that you can grow with. And so the, the path that I took was I grew up in sales, working for my dad, understood the challenges of the owner. I went to work for a corporate company, got to learn the processes of uh, uh, and how they maintained efficiency and grew areas. And then I was able to take all of that and come back to a small company ran by a guy that wanted to grow, had the, the financial backing to do it. Um, and I believed in the product and, and I was able to bring all of that in. And I, I, I show up every day here um, like the company's mine and I make decisions like the company's mine. And I'm, and when I go home, I'm thinking, how do we go from a hundred million to 400 million? Like, like, so, so my, I have ownership in this company in, in a, in a very deep way. And I think that if people stopped looking at their job as a job or a way that they made money and really took ownership of their situation, that they would get way further, way faster. Uh, you combine that kind of mentality and mindset with the work ethic behind it. And you increase your likelihood of success even more. And uh, then you throw a little luck on top of there and timing and you've got yourself like the perfect recipe. Awesome. Boom. <laughs> Mic drop. Anything, yeah. anything else from you, Gina? Any more questions? Uh, no, I mean, I could go on forever actually, but again, I know that our time is limited, so maybe we can get you on here again or you'll take us, take us on to your show one day or maybe we'll have more time. We should you. just fly to Miami. Yeah. It's an easy flight. It's an easy flight. We live in Myrtle beach. What was that? Where are you based? We're in Myrtle beach, South Carolina. We're close. Right on. How'd you guys get connected? Oh gosh. You want, you, <laughs> you want to tell that story? Okay. Here's a really great sales story. Uh, Gina used to be my business coach and I was following her on social media and she finally, I, I reached out to her. I commented on one of her events and so she called me and basically pitched me and I was like, uh, I just can't, this was years ago. I was Wait, like, did I pitch uh, you or did you pitch me? Cause I think you, you called me, right? I can't well, And then but I she, pitched you. Okay. All right. Yeah. And then I said, oh, I can't afford that. And she's like, okay. And then she let, and that was that. And a few days later I was sitting on the couch and she called me and I was like, okay, I found the money. And then we, I was, she coached me for some, a few years and then we went our separate ways and then we just got kept getting together for breakfast and and talking sales talk. Once I was really back focused into real estate again, and and we just went, we should really be recording this all the time. Yeah, well, congratulations because you guys have a great little dynamic you got going on there. <laughs> thanks. We we do. We have we have fun. We we definitely have fun. So thanks so much for taking the time to hang out with us today. And if people want to connect uh, with you and with Grant Cardone's company. Uh, what are the best ways for, for them to get connected? You can follow Grant anywhere at Grant Cardone. You can follow me anywhere at Jared Glant. I'm sure you'll have it spelled somewhere on the podcast. Oh, yeah. We'll have it in our show notes. You'll, you'll be able to see the spelling. Um, we've got a great program called Cardone U. It's the most comprehensive sales library on the planet. Uh, you can sign up for it. It's CardoneU.com. used to be ten grand for a year. Uh, we just converted to a subscription model the beginning of this year. You can, so you can get access month to month for 99 bucks a month now. Uh, we got a sales boot camp coming up. It's a three day event. Although GrowthCon is our biggest event, boot camp is my favorite event because we take a really deep dive into the main elements that affect the business and that affect your income as a salesperson, personal finances, marketing attention and branding, sales and execution. And we bring all of those things together in a three-day event, and it's unreal. 
And uh, I would highly recommend any salesperson, business owner, entrepreneur, manager, uh, anybody who, who, who sales is tied to, to come because it's hands down my favorite event, grantcardonebootcamp.com, our next one, July, and I would love to see you there. Uh, when is that? Uh, it is July, middle of, middle of July, I believe. Rachel, road trip? Oh, yeah, that's in Miami? We should road trip. Totally. Road Consider it done. Trip. Would love to have you guys. Cool. I love Miami. Awesome. Well, thank you again, once again, for, for being on Women Your Mother Warned You About today, Jared. Yeah, my pleasure. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Thanks to all of our Warners for listening to this episode of Women Your Mother Warned You About. To connect with me directly or learn more about Pivot 10 Results and Carolina Improv, you can visit GinaTremarco.com. And to connect with me... Rachel Pitts, formerly Rachel Tipton, because I'm married now. Visit theclosingcurve.com or find me all over social media as Rachel on Real Estate and find all our social media links or free downloads on our website at womenyourmotherwarnsyouabout.com. And hey, please, I know I do this on every episode and I will continue to do it, but would you please give us a rating and review on iTunes? It would be so awesome. That's the way we get found. So you could do that on iTunes or anywhere that you get your podcasts. And remember, for the best relationships, keep it real, raw, and relevant. And a little irreverence doesn't hurt either. Bye, Bye Warners. Warners. <laughs> this really will get serious soon. Yeah, I don't. It, it doesn't have to. I don't think anybody wants it to be serious. This has been a presentation of the Seller Die Network. For more podcasts that you can take out into the street and turn into money, visit SellerDieNetwork.com.